Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today. Elko, how are you? TT, I'm feeling fresh, feeling good, ready to, to speak about this game. <laughs> Amazing, that's brilliant. And in this one, we are going to be talking about Wales and Scotland. The teams have been selected uh, for <clears> the game <throat> down there at the Principality this weekend, a place where Scotland haven't won for many, 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 many years. Um, so, without further ado, let's get straight into this one and start with the Wales squad that's been selected. Certainly a few surprise selections in there. Elko, what are you seeing? Yeah, well, uh, the North not been in because of injury is a, is a big blow, isn't it? Um, but um, let, let's let's see how they go. I think Winnet is, is the one that stands out, the young kid. Um, excited about seeing what he can do. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's a... There's, there's no no you know, superstars per se, but it's it's going to be a, a workman um, like team uh, playing in a in a in a, a style we probably know the Gatlin style, and he's going to he's going to squeeze these guys and get as much as possible. They certainly have an attacking sort of back three for sure, um, and we know they've got a in Costello they've got a ten um, as you as you nicely said um, in, in one of your previous pods around looking at this squad and what what it might be is is. You know, he's a bit like Gregor, isn't he? Uh, and uh, Finn Russell and, and and guys like that who are, you know, probably action first and think later sometimes, and that's good um, when 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 stuff is on, um, particularly against a, a Scottish team. So I'm excited about seeing this back line. I, I, you know, sound like a broken record going through all these different games, but it will come down to who gets um, who gets some ball up front and who can get dominant um, dominancy up there. And uh, Scotland are. Are perceived to have a bit of a, a soft underbelly, so I, I would imagine Gatlin will have these guys very fired up, and, and the likes of, of of Beard and Jenkins will be trying to um, take heads off people. Yeah, completely agree. Just on the North thing, it was quite interesting because yeah, he has been injured, but Gatlin said that he's basically ready to go now, but they didn't want to make a late call in the week, so they decided to just not select him at all to allow the team to prepare properly which I just think for somebody with that experience and I think who would be quite important to this team, I found that a, a <clears> quite <throat> a strange decision to make. Um, I, I figured that they could just prepare as if he wasn't going to be fit and then if he made it, great. Um, but he's gone the other way with that, which I found very interesting from Gatland. Um, yeah, well, being, he, is, yeah sorry, he, is the, he is the master of sort of sports psychology, isn't he, Gatland? So he, what he's telling us and the players... My, you know, what a great beast that is to, to you know, what you don't want to say is to the, to some young kid is uh, the only reason you're playing is because George isn't fit and you would, you know, you otherwise you'd be at home watching it and or being a, you know, a bag boy. So um, he is the master of that. But but uh, it, it, maybe, you know, <clears throat> they'd done the team runs and they knew and the guys have run well and, and let's, you know, let's let's not change it up at, a, at such a late stage. Let's give these guys a, a go. And, and to be honest, TT, in one way, Wales are in a great position. You know, they've got nothing to lose. You know, that they're not they're not really this Scotland team is is which we'll get into in a second is is well established and and and, and very, very good and thought of. Uh, and and Wales are clearly going through a, a change of, of of time, you know, it's it's a new cycle. So they've got nothing to lose. And actually that that that's the best kind of Welsh team to play, or to or to to watch, should I say. You know, a, a Welsh team that has nothing to lose, go out there. Um, with the roof off and um, and play some rugby. Yeah. Um, the other thing to mention, I think, is that Will Rowlands is away from the squad due to domestic issues. So, and the reason why that's important, particularly, I think, is in terms of the bench. I assume if Beard was going to get selected, Rowlands would have been on the bench. And it just looks now, the forward replacements looks very light on caps for Wales. So I like. I think if they're going to have a chance to win this game, they're going to have to get off to a flyer, get the crowd behind them, and then hopefully when the, the younger guys, the less experienced guys, come on towards the end, which they undoubtedly will, they'll have enough to keep keep ahead of Scotland. Um, the other thing, I mean, it's a surprise for me, for sure. I thought it was going to be Mason Grady's time in this Welsh squad with Lewis rees Samet vacating to go off to the NFL. I thought now was the time for him to come in and stake a claim. But for whatever reason, he's on the bench and uh, and not selected in the starting team. Have you got any sort of thoughts on that bit, Elko? Well, I think Dyer is a shoe in He's been playing well. Presumably with, with Adams, that he's Gatlin's put a sprinkling of experience there to 
to give something, you know, that the, the, the kids can look around and, and see an old boy in, in the back line potentially. So maybe that's what it is. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, again, we spoke about it in previous previous pods about, about selection. A lot of it comes down to, you know, what are, what are the coaching staff seeing during the week? Um, you know, when they're doing when they're doing the, these run throughs and, and, and it's probably some heavy sessions as well in terms of, of contact. So er, certainly earlier in, in the week, uh, in week one. So um, maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's seeing stuff that that we're not. And that's not a bad thing. He, you know, he's not he's not just selecting on previous stuff. He's selecting on on form. Let's let's see. Yeah, and that could be a, a positive selection. It could be that Winnett's come into the into the camp and just been amazing. He's just shown everything that he wants to see, and therefore has earned the selection, as opposed to maybe Grady being being a negative. Tom, Tom, will tell. Right. we we don't know. We'll we'll never know. I'm sure. Um, okay, let's move on to the Scotland team that's been selected, and the big thing here really is that Rory Garge didn't make it um, in terms of fitness. Uh, so what does that mean for the back row, Elko? What are you seeing? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a shame. We, we kind of called it, though, didn't we, um, that we, we thought that might happen. And also because uh, with the co-captain thing as well, um, not they, they announced uh, co-captains, but, you know, that, 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 that's a decent, um, a decent back row for them. I like, I like the way Richie has um, reacted to having the captaincy taken off him. Um, he's apparently trained trained the houses off and, and and done really really well. So so yeah, I, I think they'll be competitive um, and um, and strong in in that area for sure. Yeah, I mean Luke Crosby picked at six. We've seen him more often at seven, but I know that he's played eight for his club as well. So he's he's somebody that's very versatile and can play across the back row. Completely established in the front five there for Scotland. That is a big strong unit. Moving into the backs, Ben White gets the nod at scrum half, which was uh, not what I was expecting. But I think they are they're blessed with three good scrum halves there, to be honest. <clears throat> yeah, they are. Yeah, we spoke about that before. The the sort of IP they have at nine is just I think the strongest in in the Six Nations. Um, and Horn to come on, you know, good, good guy to come off the bench and and add. But um, yeah, the, the the back line looks really really good, really strong. Interesting, King Horn's injured as well, so they brought this um, row in from Glasgow. He's he's won, he's had one cap before um, on tour to Argentina, and unfortunately for him, lasted twelve minutes and did his ACL in. So he's only back. Um, very well thought of um, Glasgow. Uh, you know, King Horn will be a loss to any team, right? He's he's playing really well over in France at the moment, but um, I, I, you, you look at that. And it's, it, that centre partnership is lovely. Such good balance. You got really two very powerful runners, but but different. You know, um, Jones is is, is fast and, and can have a nice outside break, and, and two wingers that can that can finish. So these guys are going to be very very dangerous. Um, and interestingly, they're the only team that uh, I kind of know. <laughs> yeah, okay, they're going to kick a bit, but we kind of know they're going to play right because Russell's at ten. It doesn't matter what Gregor says. It doesn't matter. It, you know, it's completely different if it was a Borthwick or or a Farrell coach in the team. It does not matter. They're going to play. And why would you not play with that with that kind of um, firepower in in the back line? Um, I, look, I alluded to it earlier about the about the, um, the roof on off situation, and I'm I'm really surprised that uh, that Townsend has has, has said no. Um, uh, it's mind games for me, but if I had a backline of that, I'd be saying, "Yeah, keep the keep it closed. Let the let the Welsh go crazy in in the stands. Let's have a massive atmosphere, and um, we'll back our backline to rip you apart." But not to be. Yeah, interesting. Um, so yeah, Carl Rowe at, at, at fullback is um, he's got an incredible story. He started off with a sevens contract for Scotland. He didn't make um, the I think it was the Olympic squad, so ended up without a contract at all. He worked as an Amazon box packer for a, for a number of months um, before eventually getting back into the game of contracts um, at Edinburgh, I think he is, isn't he? Um, wow. Oh, is he Edinburgh? And, Sorry, I thought Glasgow. Oh, maybe he is Glasgow. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Um, and now, so this is almost like a second debut for him coming back into the side. So it's an incredible story for him. And yeah, we talked about previously about Redpath possibly getting selected at 12 and, and then either Tua Peloto or Jones at 13. Mm. For a slightly different feel for the back line um, and a slightly different tactical approach, maybe taking the, all the playmaking 
uh, responsibility off Russell a little bit, but they've gone for what they know here and you can't blame them. That is a very strong looking three quarter line. As we move on to the bench, the thing that sticks out for me here is the lack of experience uh, in the propping department, particularly at tight head. So in, in other games, this might be a problem, but as we've just seen with the Welsh squad, they are also in the same situation. So this battle, I think, will, might be a really key one and a very interesting one on Saturday when the front rows get, get swapped in. Yeah. Do you think that, that Scotland will go very long then, um, particularly at tie head, uh, as long as they possibly can into the... Or think, will they... Yeah. yeah, I think they will. I think Fagerson's got a good engine on him. He's done plenty of minutes in the past. He's certainly capable of that. Uh, however, Miller Mills is a good player. Like I've seen him at Northampton and he's, he's been around a few clubs, but he's a very decent player. So it'll be interesting to see how he, uh, how he fares. Yeah, yeah, but it will be. I suppose Wales will try and tire those guys out um, and get them off as, as soon as possible. Um, and then, um, yeah, I'm liking, I'm liking their, their back uh, sort of substitutions, as you already sort of mentioned there. Redpath can come in and slip in there and, 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 and could do a lot of damage um, later on in the game. And um, he is, uh, we spoke about him at World Cup time. He's, he's a good player. I mean, uh, if, if, the, if, if, Finn wasn't there. I think I think he'd be pushing very very hard to and doing very well. So um, yeah, it'd be interesting. They could. He, he's probably obviously he's going to be a, a different player to Finn and, and maybe be able to settle a game down with, with a bit with a lead um, potentially. But um, I, I'd be surprised if Finn comes off uh, for anything other than a an injury. Yeah, I completely agree. Now then, that's uh, um, those are the selections. What type of game do we think we're going to see? I think I think we're going to see a slightly different Wales <clears throat> based on the fact that they've got Costello at 10. I think Gatland will still set them up with their, you know, their fundamentals of, of passion, cohesiveness, defence, pressure, all these things. But I think we'll see Costello take more chances. I think we'll see him attempt to play more instinctively than probably we saw with Bigger. So we might see a slightly more exciting Wales is, is my thoughts. But what do you what do you see? Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think so. I, I, I've got a feeling, uh, you know, Gregor's quite a Gregor's you know, arrogant is too strong a word. Uh, confident in his coaching abilities, uh, I think they're very her team. I think they're fed up of the of the chat um, from the World Cup. They're fed up of people talking about the two big games that they bottled it in and I think they're going to play. I think, uh, I think they're going to come away. So, so if you've got, if you've got Finn, he's going to play anyway. And then you've got Gregor Telms to play. I, I, I think we're going to see the ball moving around. And that's what Wales could do. And Gatlin potentially knows this and maybe setting a bit of a trap for them. Um, I think they'll go after um, Costello as well at, at the 10 channel with, with Jones and two pages. So um, yeah, we'll have to have to wait and see, but I hope we don't see a kick fest. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a little bit of that to begin with, particularly from from the boys in red. I think they kind of, you know, they're not going to try and chuck around the place, are they? They'll need to settle down. Um, and I think the crowd's going to be fairly important as well. Um, the record thing's interesting. Was it 22 years, I think, isn't it? Um, but, you know, I had a coach that said to me once about that stuff, you know, you might as well just not turn up then. It, it, it makes no sense. And it, those things are there to be, to be, to be beaten sort of thing. Um, and Scotland will fancy themselves for, for, for the title this year. Um, but um, yeah, I fancy a Gatlin trap and um, maybe a home win. Maybe. Do you? Yeah. By how many points? What do you call it? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think Scotland are going to spank them if I'm honest with you. Um, <laughs> I've got, I've got uh, Scotland, and I think it's going to be a two-score game. And I think uh, it might be a big two-score, like two sevens. So I'm going to go thirteen plus. Thirteen. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I agree primarily. I think Scotland. We're going to see the same from them as we've seen in previous years. They couldn't get their game on the pitch. Certainly, their attacking game on the pitch during the World Cup against the bigger teams. I suspect we will see Scotland in full flow this weekend after an initial kind of sticky patch of getting through the passion, getting through the psychology of the record, which Gatland, by the way, has mentioned in, I think, every single press conference uh, since this. <laughs> I, th- I think so. Like, he seems to mention Lovely. it. Every, every time I read something, he mentions that Scotland haven't won here for so many years. Uh, but I, I 
too don't think that will be a major factor come the end of the game. I think it's going to be a little bit tighter, but I do think Scotland will win by 10 points. And I think 33-23, another reasonably high scoring game I think we're going to see. Wow. Wow. Okay, this is going to be a great weekend. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is what we think, people. But what do you think at home? Have we got this uh, all the kind of tactical stuff right? Do you think there's other things that we've missed that will prove to be really important? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Get them in the comments down below, and we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a little thumbs up while you're down there, if you don't mind. Helps other people find it and all that good stuff. And hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on all the other stuff that's coming up during this Six Nations and beyond, just leaves me to say, Elko, thank you very much for your time and insight once again today. Thank you, TT. Let's, let's uh, really enjoy this first weekend of the Six Nations. Can't wait. 100%. And to you at home, get out and play. <laughs>